Have you ever felt woozy, maybe a little shaky, a little sweaty, or you just don't feel right after you eat a meal, but you're not sure what exactly is happening and why it's happening? Well, you're going to want to tune in on today's video because I am going to talk about reactive hypoglycemia, the non-diabetics, so normal people without diabetes can actually get after they have a meal. Welcome back. This is Diana Bitucci, and on The Voice of Diabetes today, I am going to talk about reactive hypoglycemia. What is reactive hypoglycemia? With signs and symptoms of reactive hypoglycemia, why does it happen? and of course how to treat reactive hypoglycemia a lot of times patients are really scared and they just don't know what's going on for history and all of a sudden after they eat they're just crashing and feeling absolutely awful so if you know someone that actually has been complaining about that and if you have been complaining about that make sure you share this video and watch because I think you're going to find this video very helpful. Reactive hypoglycemia is when you experience a low blood sugar after a meal. It can typically occur about one to two hours after you eat. However, it can also occur up to four hours after eating a meal where all of a sudden you are not feeling right. And of course, it can be very frustrating and it can be very scary, especially when people don't know what is happening. The difference between reactive hypoglycemia and just hypoglycemia, normally if you go a very long period without eating or a fasting state as we call it, and you know naturally your blood sugars are gonna drop in the bloodstream and you might not start to feel right. However, with reactive hypoglycemia, we're not talking about a fasting state. We're actually talking about a, a time period where you actually just ate not too long ago and your blood sugar levels are dropping to very low and dangerous levels where you are very symptomatic. A lot of the symptoms of reactive hypoglycemia, actually they are pretty similar to just plain hypoglycemia because a lot of these people will complain they're sweating, they're feeling very nervous for unknown reasons, they're feeling weak, they're hungry, they're lightheadedness, and of course shaking or trembling can also be some of the symptoms. The most common symptoms that my patients normally complain is they feel shaky, sweaty, and lightheadedness, and they just feel this very weak feeling. So what causes reactive hypoglycemia? We actually don't know the cause of reactive hypoglycemia. However, we do know the potential triggers. Intake of alcohol, and the intake of high sugary foods is a trigger that actually um, causes reactive hypoglycemia, such as white rice, white pasta, white bread, potatoes, pastries such as cakes, cookies, uh, pancakes, waffles, any of those goodies that you know a lot of us tend to like. Because what really happens when we are eating just simple carbohydrates such as those items I just mentioned, these turn into sugar very quickly. So initially we see a high spike in the blood sugar levels, but that is actually followed by a crash afterwards. But before we talk about the treatment options of reactive hypoglycemia, I do want to talk a little bit about how the diagnosis is made. So it's usually what patients will tell you initially. So each patient is very consistent with their stories because they will tell you that, you know, I had lunch and after an hour, I just felt very shaky. I was sweating. I just didn't feel right. I had to go eat something. It normally requires intake of food, usually a sugary food for them to feel normal again. Normally I have the patient keep a diary. They'll write down exactly what they ate and that will kind of um, give us an idea of what potentially is triggering this patient to feel that way. When the patient is symptomatic, I normally have them check their blood sugars manually. So I give them a glucometer with test strips and lancets and I have them check and they will say, yes, my number was, you know, maybe 58 or 60. We can confirm that the patient is in fact having a low blood sugar reaction. Normally, I will place either a Dexcom or a Freestyle Libre on the patient and I can see their trends, exactly what's going on. And it's really good because I can show the patient what's going on and I will show them, you know, when they had their lunch, initially their blood sugar spiked to, you know, whatever number it may be. And then an hour later or so, the blood sugars plummeted and that's when they started to feel symptomatic. And really the patients are just wowed um, and amazed at how much data these continuous glucose monitors can give us. Treatment options for reactive hypoglycemia is eliminating the triggers. So we know eliminating simple sugars and of course limiting alcohol intake 
or I normally tell patients never drink on an empty stomach if you want to avoid this and if you are a person that's prone to to having reactive hypoglycemia. So always have an alcohol beverage while you're eating, not in an empty stomach, uh, because that of course can, can cause this symptom and we wanna avoid it. So I normally tell patients to consume low glycemic index meals. So you wanna start including more complex carbohydrates and you wanna start replacing those with each meal, such as brown or wild rice, uh, quinoa, oatmeal, chia seeds are good, winter squash, legumes, you can actually do beans are also a good choice. Um, black beans, chickpeas, and bean-based pasta are great uh, for getting fiber and protein into your diet. And that actually leads us to the next thing. Normally I tell these patients to always incorporate a protein with every meal. So making sure that you're not just having a carbohydrate, even if it is a complex carbohydrate, I tell them to start incorporating more protein. And sure enough, patients tend to feel much better and they are actually able to eliminate these episodes. Non-starchy vegetables are also a great option like Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower. You know, you want to limit your intake of starchy vegetables like the potatoes or corn. Those are higher on the glycemic index chart and they are more loaded with carbohydrates than your non-starchy vegetables. Adding a healthy fat is also great like avocado. Protein and healthy fats actually prevent that spike from occurring. We tend to feel more full for a longer period of time so we're not crashing and feeling hungry in an hour or two right away. Trying to incorporate those obviously are great. Some great protein options would be meat or fish, nuts, tofu, low-fat dairy products like cottage cheese or Greek yogurt, and of course eggs and egg whites are also a great option. I also tell my patients to stay on an eating schedule, and to eat more regular meals and not go very long periods without eating. They can incorporate a snack in between meals, some healthy snacks of course, you know, the yogurt that I mentioned or maybe a handful of nuts. Things like that can be a, a good snack that kind of pushes you until the next meal. Eating at least every four hours normally is my recommendation. Listen to your body and see if you are the person that needs a snack in between or if you don't. So um, thank you again for tuning in and um, don't forget if you are enjoying my content, please consider subscribing and share this video with others that you may think might find this video helpful. So I will see you guys all on the next video. Take care.